This is a story about appreciation for the thousands of students who crossed the border US-Mexico. I was born in Tijuana, and my parents have lived there since the, since the city, 60s. The old Tijuana was very different than it was today. And it's very common to cross the border or have family living in the US, at least in my family. More than half of my maternal family works in San Diego. My cousins were studying in Chula Vista, and I constantly hear that they worry about the border traffic. I remember they got up, eat a quickie breakfast, and arrive at the border as soon as possible. While they live with the stress and worry, they fought for a better future. I didn't understand at the time because I'm 10 years younger than my cousins. As the time passed, I had a baby when I was only 19 years old. She was born in San Diego, and we came back to Tijuana to continue with our life. I was too young to understand many things as a young mom starting the university, but my family has always supported me. As the year, years passed, I finished my university studies with difficulties. It wasn't easy task are all with a baby and a full-time job in Mexico. In Mexico, there are not part-time or hourly jobs, so I had to work full-time as a new mom. Adding to my challenge, I did not have a car, and public transportation in Tijuana is terrible. I remember the day I got wet on the bus because it hard rained a little the night before. There were many puddles on the street and the bus did stop over the puddles breaking quickly. Then I saw the dirty water coming all over me and shower me and shower me. I was too scared and opened my mouth. Two seconds later I was all wet with mud in all my face and work uniform even as low as some. I think I have acquired a lot of immunity, and that's why I don't get sick anymore. <laughs> In February 2014, my daughter is not a baby anymore. She will start middle school. She was turning 12 years old, and it was time to think about her future. I realized that studying in the US was the better option for her. So I started my research. Research. What documents does she need? Is the same school calendar? Will she take classes in Spanish or English in the beginning? These were, these were just a few of my thoughts. Like a typical teenager, she didn't want to change school and leave her friends. Okay, okay. I remember that even at her age, I didn't like change and that I didn't want to separate myself from my friends. She was not only worried about her friends. Irina, my daughter, and I, I worked, worked always together. At the bottom of my heart, I want to be with her every day because crossing the border Monday to Friday was not an option. I had a tourist visa in that moment. Suddenly, two or three days per week, she had to stay in one of my cousin's houses. Finally, I gave up Irina and continued her education in Mexico. Two years later, my life made a 45 degree turn. I didn't believe much in love anymore as I had other priorities like working, caring for education, my daughter, and opening my own business. But I saw the most beautiful smile in my life. And the best thing, he was walking to work to ask me to dance. He was an excellent dancer and a nice man. He had, we had a connection from the beginning. He came every single weekend to Tijuana from LA driving three or four hours, and some days at least five hours. 
In a short time, we were a family of three. I got married in September 2017, and my husband started to cross the border to go to his job. We couldn't sleep well anymore because we were worried about the waiting time to cross the border. He supported me to enroll my daughter in high school. So both he and my daughter crossed the border Monday to Friday. The adventure began. I did not have any idea what the big crossing could be. I felt the border like, like a portal. You can see anything you imagine. A lot of people use the pedestrian line like us. I was standing in line with my, with my daughter. I stood on Mexico side while she crossed along the US border entrance. The first time I was just worried about her and the time. I could hear a clock in my hair. Literally, we went to sleep in our day clo daytime clothes, waking up fully dresses. In the first week, we were exhausted. I wondered, how can I do this for years? How can I wake up at 3 a.m. every day? How can I survive? Yes, survive. It's the perfect word to describe the action to cross the border every single day for a better future. I observe kids of all ages carry their pack backpacks, getting breakfast and stand up in the line. I saw kids with pajamas under their clothes and moms brushing their girls' hair into a ponytail. Parents carrying their tired children who are exhausted from standing for a such long period of time. But my heart breaks when I saw siblings with fur in, the, in their eyes because they have no options but to cross the border alone with no parents or adult. Their sacrifice was for a better future. I, an I analyzed all the days. I did the same routine. Went to sleep 8 p.m., dressed with the outfit for the next day, wake up, eat a quick breakfast, and it doesn't matter the weather, I dropped to the border. I parked my car always on red line because there's no a parking lot nearby. Walk it faster to start to do the waiting line. In a good day, we just waited 15 minutes, but many times we did not make it cross the time to school. We felt despair and frustration because it was situation out of our hands. We were like a family. I saw the same faces every day and it wasn't long before I could recognize their faces. All those kids were warriors. We heard a lot of histories about each family situations. Some kids lived with bad consequences from their parents and had a complicated life. A lot of teenagers felt alone because they really were with no body of members of their family. However, they attended school and looked for a better life. I always pray that God will continue in their hearts and they will have taken the right path. Seeing those sad and worried faces broke my heart. Yes, the life is not, the life is not easy. But I felt confident that if those kids finish school, they will achieve all their goals. What happened to us? Well, I came to the U.S. in October 2019, and I started school again at 30 years old. But that is another story. One thing I can say is that it is very difficult to start over at my age. But here I am, enrolled again at school, and have learned a new language. My husband is a Southwestern College student too. My daughter finished high school, and now she still serves the country as a Marine. My kitten, her nickname, 
continues fighting, but a different way. Thank you. Maria Garcia.